connection establishes connectivity between the ChainSys platform and the source and target systems. It is required to extract data from the source system and load it into the target system. In our case, the source system is Oracle eBusiness Suite, and the target system is Oracle ERP Cloud. This is the connection landing form where all the supported endpoints are listed. Let's see how the Oracle eBusiness Suite connection is defined. This is the source connection. It connects to Oracle eBusiness Suite. So we connect its backend database using its host name, port number, and SID. The username and password are given here. And now we see the Oracle ERP Cloud connection. Here, we can see the username and password to authenticate the Oracle ERP Cloud, along with the process URL and FBDI URL. Data Object is used to extract data from any source system. It supports two data sync modes, Full Refresh and Incremental. Full Refresh extracts all the data from the source, all the time, while Incremental extracts only the data change. In the source definition, we define how to extract data from the source, whether it's table-based or query-based. Here, it is query-based. So once we have entered query and parsed it, we will see all the columns of the query and its data type in the grid. All these columns' values will be extracted from the source system. In addition to the query, we can add custom columns, if needed, and can define any preprocessor to add any procedure to run before executing this query. Loader is used to load data into any target system. This loader loads supply data into Oracle ERP Cloud. Oracle ERP Cloud supports two data loading models. One is FBDI, and the other is process method. This loader is based on the FBDI approach, In the Fusion Table definition, we have defined all the columns of the supplier object. Unique columns and columns that are mandatory for the supplier data are defined here. In the Fusion Program Mapping, we have defined the job details, like which job needs to be triggered for loading data into the interface table, and then which jobs are concurrently called after the Enterprise Loading Table is completed. This is the Fusion Error Handling screen. Here, we can see how the successful and errored records are defined. We collect data from the Oracle Error Table, and if our data exists in the Oracle Error Table, then the record will be errored out. Otherwise, it will be marked as a success. The loader can define a preprocessor to run before it starts the data loading, and we have a transformation where one can define their own lookup, sequence, and expression transformations. Then, we have a pre-validation that allows us to validate the data before it gets loaded into the Oracle ERP cloud. We also have a preload reconciliation where we can compare the raw data from the source and the transformed data, so which column is mapped. And then we have a post-lead reconciliation which compares the transformed data and the data that's actually gotten loaded into the target system. We have cross-reference mapping and we have a post-processor to be executed after data loading is completed. Data flow defines the flow of data between source and target systems. This data flow extracts purchase orders from Oracle eBusiness Suite and uploads it to Oracle ERP Cloud. 
On the left, we can see the data objects that extract the data, and on the right, we have the loader that loads the data into the ERP cloud. In the middle is the mapper that connects source and target. In the mapper, we have column level mapping, basically deciding which column in the source gets loaded into which column in the targets. In addition, we have all the active data transformations in the data flow. For example, joiner denormalizes data, normalizer normalizes data, sorter sorts data, and router routes the data into multiple target systems based on the conditions. It also filters out unwanted records if needed. We have aggregator to group the records and do calculations like average, sum, minimum, maximum, and count. We have comparator, which compares the data coming from the source into the already existing records from the target. We can choose whichever records we want moved into the target. Migration flow helps to orchestrate a complex data migration. This migration flow migrates data from Oracle eBusiness Suite to Oracle ERP Cloud. The functional model it covers is procure to pay, so where the object starts with the supplier, supplier's addresses, supplier site, PO requisitions, and it goes up to AP invoice. Each box is a data flow, so it has a dependency. So when you execute a migration flow, the data flow executes one after another since they have a functional dependency. Each data flow has entry criteria, which means they only start if the previous data flow is completed with a certain success rate. We have an approval component to be added in between, if needed. So if it's added, the respective data flow will only start after the approval from a defined person. Here's all the data flows. We can drag any data flow and drop it into the designer window if we want. Here we have global entry criteria, which applies for all the data flows, and we have status indicators to group the data flows based on the success ratio. Migration flow execution summaries shows the consolidated status of the data migration. On the left, we can see all the data flows of the migration flow. When we move the mouse over it, we can see the success rate of the data flow. On the right, we can see the data flows classified into four categories, green, amber, red, and gray. When a data flow has a success rate above 50, it's green. We don't have any data flows here that are amber. One is red because it completely failed, and we have no gray because all our data flows were executed. In the list, we can see all the data flows in detail, like how long it took to complete, what is the success rate for each one, what's the error percentage, and the number of iteration count of each data flow. We can rerun or reprocess the errored flaws. We can select them, and if we rerun it, it will extract the data from the source system, whereas if we reprocess it, it will reprocess the stage data and then retransform, validate, and load data into the target system. Thank you for watching.